Hey friends, David Watts here with another Luminar 2018 video for you. This time we'll be looking at RAW files and comparing it to JPEG files and uh, see what we can learn and see how we can edit our photos a little bit better. That's my goal is to help you craft better images with less time, more efficiently. And I think Luminar does a great job at that. And I hope these little tutorials just help point you in the right direction, maybe give you some ideas that you want to experiment with as well. So uh, let's jump right into it. This is an image I took from the um, top of the rock, Rockefeller Plaza, New York City, looking toward the Empire State Building, pictured right there. Uh, great place, so if you get a chance, you should definitely go. Uh, this is the JPEG file, and part of what I wanted to do in this video is just compare the two and see what we gain by using the RAW file. So I had my Fujifilm X-T2 set to record both the JPEG and the RAW file, so the picture is taken simultaneously. Um, it, it takes one picture and you know crafts one as a JPEG and uh, sort, stores the other as a RAW file. So we're looking at the JPEG file and here is, let's see if I can properly, there we go, uh, here is the, the RAW file. And you'll see some differences right away. Probably the JPEG, I'm back on the JPEG now, maybe has a little more contrast to it. Uh, the RAW file maybe um, uh, a little less contrast but just a little different feel. And that, of course, is because the, the engine in the Fuji X-T2 took the raw data it captured and made some decisions and crafted that into the JPEG that we see here. And depending on how I had the film simulation set, I probably was just using Provia, the standard. But depending on how you have the film simulation set, that's going to change you know, the end result. There are a lot of advantages to shooting in JPEG. I do it plenty of times. Sometimes I'll shoot only JPEG, but there are some occasions where you want to get the very most out of your image. You want to take it as far as you can. This kind of image might be that sort of circumstance where you really want the raw file to see what you can do with it. So I want to give some, a few tips from, from my experience of how you can better edit and work with raw files and some ideas on why you should occasionally and uh, the benefit you'll get from it. So here's number one. Uh, first of all, you notice we don't have any filters going in here and I did that for a reason so we just start fresh. Uh, let's flip back to the raw file. We're going to add a filter and we're going to come up here at the very top, essential, and you'll see raw develop. So tip number one is real simple. Use the raw develop filter. Interestingly, you will notice once you use it, it's gone from the list. Did you see that? Let's remove it. And uh, it's back. All right. But once you use it, you can only use it once. I thought that was kind of interesting. Other filters you can use twice. Uh, so, for example, let's add the structure filter. And you'll see it down there. We can add the tone filter. And you'll see it. Let's add the structure filter again. And you can have the structure filter in there twice. We have it once here. We have it once down here. But the raw develop, I'm going to get rid of these now. The raw develop, interestingly, you can only use once. And I guess that makes sense. You're doing the sort of base level development on the image. When we go to the JPEG file, uh, if we add filters, we won't find raw develop. We'll find develop. All right. So similar, but, you know, we're, we're not operating at the raw level. We're dealing with a JPEG file. By the way, these JPEG files are, I think, 12 megabytes, perhaps. Whereas the raw file, if I flip back over there, it's about a 50 megabyte file. So there, there is a lot more data. So hopefully we get something for that. If we don't, then why bother? It's not worth it. What I want to show you is I think you'll see that we do get something for it right away. Yeah, for those images where you really want to try to wring the most out of it. And, and as this, I think, somewhat typical, it's always good to set the white balance or to adjust that a bit. And one of the ways we can do that is with this eyedropper. And we're looking for something kind of neutral gray. And right away you'll say, yeah, that does not work. And sometimes the eyedropper thing just doesn't work at all. Uh, let's uh, sort of do Command Z and get back to something realistic. So instead, I'm going to use uh, the temperature slider here. And I think you'll probably say right away, yeah, we're heading in the right direction. If we go all the way over here, way too blue. If we go all the way to the right, that's better, actually. I think to the right, all the way to the right is too far, but somewhere in here, 
I really like the warmth that's created from these lights. Now, let's flip back to the JPEG file. Again, we can try, and maybe we'll get a little better results. Eh, maybe a little bit better results. It wasn't nearly so sort of radical. But still, I think I'd rather try to set the, the white balance myself. And one thing, again, let's slide it to the extremes as we did with the raw. And, and right away, you can see some kind of weird results happening there when we slide it too far. Let's come to the right like we were doing and see if we can get something pretty similar to what we had with a raw file. And so we're back to the raw and we'll just flip back and forth comparing the two. And one of the things I think you'll see is that we've got some nice gray skies here. And with the JPEG file, it, it just retains a bit of a blue, kind of a blue gray tint. Uh, that we probably are not going to be able to get rid of. If I go all the way to the right, it just, it's just going to keep this sort of blue tint to it. Whereas with the, the raw file, I've really got kind of a true, gr true gray, if I can say that correctly, uh, perspective on these clouds, and that's what it was really like. So I think you're seeing right away one of the limitations of the JPEG file. There's just not enough data left in the file to, to give us the full range of uh, sort of color adjustment we might like. I'm playing with the tint just a bit to make sure I didn't overlook any possibilities, but we're just not going to be able to get quite the same look out of the JPEG, quite as accurate of a look. Let's close up the panel just so we can see them side by side. Again, here the colors are a little more yellow in the lights. Here a little more orange. I personally like that. I, I like the look of it. And here are the skies, the clouds are more of a true gray, and here more of a little bit of a, a bluish kind of tint with all of that. So that's one of the key differences I think you'll see uh, with the raw file. Now, here's something else. Um, and you have, of course, uh, within this raw develop, you have other adjustments, by the way, exposure and contrast. You might, for example, want to boost the clarity. In fact, let's do that. Let's bring the clarity up to about 50. We're going to do the same on the JPEG file. We're going to take it right to 50 as well. Not sure it'll be a perfect comparison. But then we're going to zoom in at about 100% on both of these. So here's the raw image that's processing. And um, I think we've got a lot of sharpness in there. And in the JPEG image, I think you'll see generally a little softer. The, the details are just a little more obscured. You can almost make out a little faint horizontal line running through the bright area here in the spire of uh, the Empire State Building. In this one, the JPEG, I think it's a bit harder to see. These are really fine details, of course. Um, and again, this is for that moment where you're just trying to maybe wring everything possible out of the image. Uh, look at it from a little different perspective. Look at the cloud structure here. So look at this cloud area right in here. All right, so, you know, it's a cloud, right? But when you look at it here on the raw image, uh, you've got, I think, a little more detail to it. Now, don't confuse, you know, we're picking up more noise in the raw file, and we'll explain that more in just a moment. Uh, maybe look here as well. You see a horizontal line wisping across and in the JPEG, it's just a bit more obscured. The clouds just have a bit more texture in the raw file and a little less texture in the JPEG. And that's because the JPEG has made some decisions, that the processing engine in the camera made some decisions, threw out some of the data it felt it didn't need, and you've just lost a little bit of that detail. So there, there are some of the differences. One other thing, uh, while we have the raw file in front of us, that we can do, let's go back to... Uh, uh, sort of normal perspective. We have the ability to make some lens adjustments and one is distortion. I, so I, I tried to have these spires uh, straight up and down and you will see that they're not quite uh, straight up and down but with a little bit of adjustment to this slider I've got them pretty close now. This, this one here is not quite there. So that's what you can do with the distortion. If we go really extreme you can you can see how that will change things back and forth. But I think with just a little bit of uh, result there, you've got 
a pretty straight perspective in terms of those, uh, those spires. And that's, that's one way. Look for those things that should be straight. Uh, you've also got the ability to do some de-vignetting. So a lot of times the JPEG file, uh, let's get back here, the JPEG file, you know, the lenses have a bit of vignetting effect almost always. And the, the processing engine will correct that by boosting uh, the, the area to the periphery of the image. Again, if you'd rather do that yourself, you can do that with the, the raw file um, with, this, uh, with this filter. So again, by going to the extremes, you can start to see, you see the vignetting there, that, how we've added back in. Oh, we don't need that much, obviously. What we're looking for is just a, a little bit to maybe make the image a bit more balance between the middle and the outside of the image, okay? So you might notice down in here, for example, in the lower right corner, you see some decent, uh, you know, information. Whereas down here, it's a bit in the shadows. It's kind of dark and black. And here, a little more detail. So that's another example of how we've just got a little more information with a RAW file. One other little adjustment we'll make here is in fact uh, contrast, just adding a little bit more contrast. And again, might not need it on the JPEG file, but I'll add it just a bit as a comparison. So I think the, the big thing you'll see is we get just more details and more information and a little better quality out of the, the RAW file. Uh, so again, use the RAW develop filter, uh, set the white balance. You're gonna have some more latitude with the RAW file than you do the JPEG file. Um, in general, I think you'll have a little better sharpness with the raw file. Finally, uh, we mentioned the noise situation, and that's something you will likely have to address a bit more, especially a nighttime image like this. This was ISO 3200, um, and so usually you're going to have to do a little bit of denoise kind of work. So let's add that filter, and it's right here under Issue Fixers. And if we, if we go back in at 100%, you will see there is definitely some noise in this raw image. When we look at the, um, the JPEG file, and we zoom in to the same place, there is less noise, isn't there? So raw, you see more noisiness. And with the JPEG, it's obscured, okay? And that's part of what the processing engine did for us. But you might prefer to control that yourself. So if you're shooting raw, you will need to control it yourself. And let's just, for illustration, go about halfway. Always do this at 100%. That's my judgment. I think others probably recommend the same because that's where you can really see the noise reduction. And right away, you see that we've gotten rid of a ton of it. If we turn that filter off, there it is. If we turn the filter back on, the noise is basically gone. If you go too high with this, of course, of course you will obscure details that you want to keep uh, but you know something usually in the lower half of this luminosity slider will be sufficient if we compare it to the JPEG uh, you, you don't see much noise in here and I'd say the images are pretty similar I would still argue in the JPEG uh, the details in the clouds are just a bit more obscured focus on this area up here and here I believe you've just got a little more life to those clouds in the raw file. So look, especially in this area, see it's just kind of blah here, just a bit more texture, at least to my eyes. So those are some quick uh, suggestions or tips I would make about working with raw files. Number one, use that raw develop filter. Uh, use the white balance function within it. Uh, I think you'll get better sharpness generally with the raw file. Generally, whatever you need to do, you've got more latitude to do it with the RAW file. If your JPEG is spot on the money, then you likely have less you need to do. With the RAW file, you probably need to do a little more, but you have latitude to do a lot more. And then a little bit of noise reduction. Real simple to add, and you'll have a nice image. And you know, there are things you might do differently to this image, but I think it has a nice feel and it's a great starting place. So actually, I'm going to use this image for uh, a subsequent video, which I'll post soon, uh, where we'll use some 
interesting sort of creative filters and just explore other results that we might be able to get. So that's it for now. I hope that helps you a little bit with the, the raw filter or the raw file processing filter and might help you as you try to craft better images with uh, less trouble and more quickly. That's it for now. Have a good one. Take care. See you.